Hi. Do you have any nature jewelry at your house? Anything that's made out of shells or seeds or berries or feathers? Look around and see. Uh, while I talk to Chris about some of the things that are on this table that are nature too, but not really jewelry. Have you looked these things over, Christopher? Yes. <laughs> Which one do you like the best? The coconut. You like him. Well, he's sort of... Fierce, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. You have anything like this at your house? Yeah, I have one of those. Where do you think you might have come from? Where'd you get yours? At the in a store in North Carolina. In North Carolina? Oh, well, lots of people bring them back from Florida when they go down for trips. But uh, my friend sent me this one. Well, she lives in Wisconsin, but she said she got it from her brother when he was in Hawaii. He brought it. He sent it home to her for a souvenir during World War II, and she doesn't like it because it's so fierce, so gruesome looking. So she sent it to me because she knows I like all kinds of unusual things that are made out of nature. Susan, do you know what it's made out of? A coconut. Right. <laughs> a coconut that it still has its husk on. It doesn't look like a coconut. Well, not like the coconuts you see in the store, because the coconuts you see in the store have already had their husk taken off. But he's got some more nature on him, too. What are his eyes made out of, Christopher? Shells. And his teeth? That looks like a shell. I think it is, too. Just one of the uh, scallop shell pushed in. So I think we can park him over here next to our monkey. And we will have a whole collection of coconuts. You want to set him over there, Christopher, please? That was nice of Verna to send him to me. He's sort of wobbly. Oh, you got him to sit, sit up the first time. Fine. Okay, Susan, what do you see in this rooster? Seeds oh. and sunflower seeds and uh, bird seeds. Bird seed and sunflower seeds and... And uh, beans. Beans bean, right there. Beans. And there's one more thing. Do you recognize those? Um, corn. Corn, right. Uh, that special colored kind of corn you see in the fall. Well, a girl made this and sent it to me, and I think that's a neat little thing that you could you could do sometime in your spare time if you had good strong glue and lots of seeds. Uh, make just a little outline on cardboard and glue the seeds on to make a design. I'm very fond of roosters because they wake me up in the morning. <laughs> you missed a few sunflower seeds. <laughs> well, maybe Aurora took a bite out of it when I wasn't looking. <laughs> I have some other friends that just moved to a town in Virginia where they found lots of new things that they didn't have around their home before. So they brought me a bag full of stuff from their new home. And let's see if you how good nature detectives you are. What do you think this is, Christopher? It's a stick. A stick. And what makes it so interesting? And this, this stick is interesting in the same way. No bark. The beaver uh, ate the bark off. How'd you know that? Because. Uh, you, you studied beavers? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that about beavers, Susan? Mm hmm. They like to eat the bark. I can tell they've been eaten because it's all that. Right. Well, isn't that lucky that my friends moved to a place where there are beavers close by and they can go down and get beaver chewed sticks anytime <laughs> they want? Because there aren't any beavers around here. You can see the tooth marks, especially well on that little stick where they chewed off the right bar. Right there. Right. Sort of like eating corn on the cob <laughs> uh, that we like to eat. And then all around their new house, they have different kinds of bushes uh, with berries on. These, with well, the blueberries, are called privet. And we have those around here, too. Privet. And we might use some of those in our nature jewelry later on, so let's take, take those with us. And this is a, an interesting bush that doesn't do very well around here because it gets too cold in the wintertime. But down further south where the wands are, it grows. And it has Just like cranberries. Yeah, beautiful red berries like cranberries and interesting leaves. And it's called Nandina. Isn't that a pretty name, Nandina?
And these are sort of dried up because it took them a long time to get here, but you can tell what that was. Can't you? Flower. All right. <laughs> You're not going to say what kind of flower? Mm -mm, I don't know. Flower. You got an idea, Christopher? What are yellow flowers that bloom in the spring? Poppies? A little before poppies. Daffodils. Daffodils. They're daffodils? <laughs> yeah, that one has a lot of petals. And another neat thing near them is a place that they can go and dig up shells that... Oyster shells? Well, that's a scallop shell, but there are oyster shells there, too. But these are shells of animals that lived millions of years ago. What do you call shells of animals that lived that long ago? Dead animals. <laughs> dead, right, but more than dead, they're fossils. So isn't that exciting that they live close enough to go and get their very own fossil and they don't have to make a long, long trip? So there's a nice fossil scallop shell. Now what about, oh, here's another kind of berry that's the color of ink. So it's called an ink, ink, berry. ink berry. Good, Susan. I think the Indians used this. All right, well, yeah, there's something else we have. We have a purplish one called an ink berry, but this is an ink berry that grows on a kind of holly. But what about all these funny things? And if you have them on bushes in your yard, you're probably not very happy about it because they're considered pests if you have too many of them. Here, take, take one and look at it. Have you ever seen these before, Christopher? Yeah, I have one um, on our bench. Do you have a name for it? Mm -mm. This is on your nature bench? I don't have a na on nature, nature bench. bench. You have it on a bench mm -hmm. at home? Did it just grow there? Yes. Or did you put, put it there? Uh, well, these are made by little caterpillars, and they hang on the tree and look like little What's in them? bags, so they're called bag worms. Well, some of them have nothing in, and some of them have eggs in of the little caterpillars. Later on, do they turn up to be the white nuts? No, no. Later on, uh, the little, if the ones that have eggs in will hatch out and the little caterpillars will crawl out and crawl all over the tree and make new little bags. Maybe later on we'll have time to cut one open. The silk is so strong, it's very hard to get them open. These caterpillars can really spin strong silk. Well, let's go over to the um, discovery table and take some of these berries and see if we can use them to make some nature jewelry. What is jewelry, Susan? It's like bracelets and necklaces and brace a necklace like yours. Oh, yes. Well, that, that's good. You have an idea. It, why do people wear jewelry? Looks pretty on to, to, to make them feel pretty and look pretty. And people have had jewelry for years and years and years and years. That's one of the things that uh, anthropologists, archaeologists have found when they've dug up tombs of people that lived long ago in Egypt and in Italy and in Rome, they found that people loved jewelry even back in those days. And what is it usually made of? What are the kinds of things that jewelry is made of? Beads. Beads, gold and silver. Those are, and uh, those things last little, a long time. Little seeds about that little. And seeds. Right, and nature jewelry is especially nice because it doesn't cost anything. You can go out and gather the things yourself to make the jewelry. And it might not last as long as gold and silver and precious metals, but it doesn't cost as much either. Let's take a look at a few other examples of nature jewelry. This is a, my necklace is a, a vase, really, a, a ceramic vase with just room for one little flower. Is you put just, Yeah, you put a little bit of water in there, and then you pick your one little flower and wear it for the day, and that's an aconite. It looks like a buttercup. It's in the buttercup family. It's pretty. Thank you. Why don't you get a daffodil and put it in? Well, because I don't have any daffodils. <laughs> we have some. Here's an interesting necklace mm. that came from Hawaii. They have lots of beautiful things in Hawaii to make jewelry, nature jewelry out of. And you recognize the little white things? Yes, she shells. Shells. You have any idea what these are, Christopher? These? I feel them. Feel them if you get an idea. Have you seen them in the ocean? Well, yeah, that's where they came from. But for a long time, I didn't know what they were. And finally, we found out that they're the, the spines off a special kind of sea urchin. You know what a sea urchin is? Looks like a 
little round pin push cushion with spines sticking out all over, and it's a relative of a starfish or a sand dollar. And um, in the ocean, they have all kinds of sea urchins. These are very thick and beautiful spines and make a nice necklace. But that would be a little hard for us to make, wouldn't it? Even if we had shells and we had sea urchin spines, it would be pretty tough to get to drill holes in them. So we've got to find something easier to work with. But that's pretty. And here's another idea, a necklace made of... Be uh, corn. Corn and beans, right. But that, that's another uh, thing that would be a little hard to do, unless you got the corn and the beans when they were very soft. And I think that's a, what these uh, people must have done. But I've had a lot of trouble with this necklace because the string is very weak. You know, so but we'll be sure when you start to make yourself a nature necklace that you pick good, strong thread or good, strong string so it won't break after all your hard work. Here's one I made a long time ago. And there's only one problem with it. It's so heavy, <laughs> it's hard to wear. Can you tell what it's made of? Beans. Lama beans. Well, uh, that's pretty close. I wouldn't really expect you to know this tree. These came off a tree out of a big green fruit about that big called a pawpaw. You've sung that song, haven't you? Where, oh, where's dear little Susan way down yonder in the pawpaw patch? Didn't you ever sing that mm -hmm. way back in the first grade? You, Christian, you know that? You don't know that one? Well, anyway, I saved all the seeds from our pawpaw tree and made a pawpaw seed necklace, but it's pretty heavy. And a long time ago, when I was a little girl, my father gave me this one. You want to guess what that came from, Christopher? Looks like a tooth or something. Right. A lion's tooth? Well, not quite that fierce. It's um, a boar's tooth, a wild boar from the Philippines. He traveled over to the Philippines, and he brought, brought me that. Now, here's something that's more like something that we could do. There are two things in this necklace that one of my friends made up in New York State. Acorns and galls. And so I think that he must have kept his eyes open when he was out walking around the fields and thought of an idea that I've never seen before acorns and galls and I found some galls when I was out looking for things this morning that I thought you might like to try. Let's get started on something. I was um, in New York recently and I went to the Natural History Museum and there I saw a necklace made out of parrot feathers. So I thought, well, my goodness, that's a good idea. Aurora's shedding his feathers right now, and I'll just start myself a necklace out of Aurora's feathers. Aren't they beautiful? Mm -hmm. And I forget who had made this necklace, but um, the necklace I saw in the museum, it was really pretty. It was, it was a green parrot feathers and of, of different sizes. You have to get a needle with a big eye and, and strong thread. So I think I'll work on my feather necklace and help you get started on one of your own. There's, do boys ever wear necklaces, Christopher? No. They don't? Yes, <laughs> Haven't they you do. seen some boys wear necklaces? I have. They wear a little. Well, you can, you can make one for your Arabia, mother. In Arabia, I think. They wear what? In Arabia. Arabia, yeah, I'm sure they do, and they, they even wear them around here. I've seen boys with nice, nice they leather wear crosses. beads around their neck, right. Well, there's a needle thread for you, and be very careful not to stick yourselves. And look around in here, or maybe I'll just dump these on the table so you can pick out, and you can have some of Aurora's feathers, too. This is funny looking. Yeah, that's a little fungus. And we'll talk about some other things while you're working. You can, I'll show you what we have. There, these little thin things are seeds from the tulip tree. And they're sort of pretty, and they last. And those are little fungi that grow on um, trees. 
And if you have a good imagination, they look like little turkey tails. That's their name. They look like a little flock of turkeys or a couple turkeys with their tails up. And you can put them on a necklace or I tried a little experiment just before you came of making one into a pin, a nature pin, by just gluing a safety pin on the back. So see what you can do. Now, the sunflower seeds I don't think will be too hard. And here are some galls I found. They're not as big as the galls that Dennis had in the necklace he made, but I think you can get a needle through them. These are bullet galls from an oak tree. And I think you can put the needle through the sunflower seeds if you try. Right. But the corn is going to be too tough. I think these people that use corn must have soaked it first. Yeah, don't try the corn, Susan. I think we'd have to have a have a little drill or something. Can you push this over? Sure. You like to make things, Chris? Mm -hmm. Good. I put a knot there so it wouldn't come off the other end. Let me pull your string out a little bit there. Where are these? Oh, those little red berries came off a rose bush, the multiflora rose. They're really rose hips. And uh, they look as if they would last for a while. Can we use one of these? Sure. Sure. That'll be different. <laughs> and you can use... To put that in the middle. Use some of Aurora's feathers, if you want. And I don't know whether these privet berries will work. They, I think they will. Some berries have big seeds in the middle, and your needle just won't go through. <clears throat> when I was a little girl, I used to make necklaces all the time. And sometimes I would get very discouraged because the seeds were so big in the middle. And these Nandina berries are pretty. We don't have very many of those, but you can each have one. Oh, and you recognize that, I hope. Yeah. All the little country boys and girls should recognize these. Can we put one of those ones? Well, tell me what it is first. It's a weed plant that holds weeds. What do you think, Christopher? That's the beginning of a definition. I bet you'd recognize it if it had little white parachute things in with brown seeds on that would fly out all around the room. And if you, if it was fresh and you took a leaf off, a little white drop of milk would come out. Something that looks like milk. Do you know a weed like that? I saw one before, but I don't know what it's called. Milkweed. I thought those might be nice because the insides are pretty and the outsides feel nice and fuzzy. So you might want to put one of those on. Some of these things get real hard to put in. Well, I know. But if you have get some, if there's something you really want to put on and you can't, uh, I'll try and help you. Mm -hmm. You have to know which way to approach the sunflower seed, too. If you put it through flat, I think it's better. See, then it doesn't crack. Here's something else. If you were in a hurry and you just wanted something interesting to wear around your neck that was different, you could just tie a string around a wishbone. A wishbone. Right. Or any other kind of a bone that, that was had an interesting shape. Or if you were in a, a real hurry and you didn't have time to go out and look for any nature. You can make a nature necklace with just drawing some flowers on a piece of paper like one of my friends did. Or she drew a flower and a butterfly and put a piece of yarn on the top. So there are all kinds of ideas for making nature jewelry. These aren't exactly jewelry, but I thought you'd like to see them and, and you could probably use the same idea problems with your sunflower seeds, yeah. Susan. <laughs> Here, let me get that through for you. Yeah, why don't you look at one of these and see what you think is in there. <laughs> I know it's in one. What? In this one, it's like the seeds that I think you plant. Well... Bam, it's too bad that everything's covered up with uh, plastic because if if you uh, if they weren't covered up you could smell them. These are rock. These are rocks. <laughs> now let's put them all back in a row again. I'll tell you what they are. First of all, what do you think 
I'm going to do with them. What do you think that one of my friends... Doorknobs. Right, doorknobs for, for kitchen cabinets. And this one that's green has parsley in it. And this one... Uh, I'm not, I think those are caraway seeds. And this one that Jennifer, that Susan thought was rocks are little tiny poppy seeds. Do you ever get those on rolls or bread? Mm -hmm. Poppy seeds, and these are little coriander seeds. But isn't that a nice idea for nature knobs for your kitchen cabinets? If you're good at putting things. You having trouble with sunflower seeds too, Christopher? If you put them, have you tried a feather? Feathers yeah. are easy. Yeah. Why don't you try a feather and a milkweed yeah. pod? It, yeah, that's right, right through. <laughs> I think the necklace I saw in the museum, the uh, people had tied knots around, just tied the thread around, but that works fine. So you've, so far you've got two galls and a sunflower seed. And now you've got a parrot feather. <laughs> How about a nice red berry? That ought to be easy. This is getting easy to do. Right, it takes a long time to make a whole necklace. Oh, yes, yours is getting looking pretty. You don't have to make it a really long necklace. The necklace is going to be any length. So that's going to be pretty. Nature necklaces are really very popular now, and sometimes you go to a shop and you see a necklace you'd like, but it's so expensive you can't afford it, so it's nice to look around and uh, get some ideas for making your own. Here's some more from my collection that might give you some ideas. There's a little scene painted on an oyster shell. Everybody can find an oyster shell. And there's a... Uh, you recognize what's in there, Christopher? Looks like paper. Don't you think they could be real? Those flowers look like paper. <laughs> well, they're dried flowers, and maybe they do look like paper, but they're real flowers that were pressed and then put inside an old eyeglass to make a nice little pen. It's in a rather odd shape, but it's nice. Aurora, aren't you? You're getting ready, ready to contribute some more feathers for the nature necklace? How about a sunflower seed? Aurora. I think I know what that one is, a shell. Well, what's hard and isn't a shell? A rock? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, some people have special polishing machines, and they can polish up the rocks and make them be beautiful and make them into jewelry. Aurora doesn't have as much trouble getting through the sunflower seeds as we do. I can open them up with my teeth. <laughs> Good, Chris has found out the feathers are, are the easiest. <laughs> and here's another idea. This is a little too fancy for us, but we haven't talked about using wood. You know, sometimes you find an interesting piece of wood, and uh, you could just polish it and hang it around your neck. Or if you learn how to be a wood maker, uh, work with wood, you could work on making a nice bracelet out of different kinds of wood put all together. And it would be fun if you knew all the different kinds of wood in the bracelet, too. And I've seen wooden rings. You really have to keep your eyes open and use your imagination. Now, if I were walking down the beach, I probably wouldn't have thought of picking that up and taking it home and making a pin out of it. But one of my friends did. And it's sort of interesting, because every time you look at that piece of wood, you can think about wh what made all the holes. Do you have any idea what could have made all those holes in a piece of wood? A uh, little ant. It has a pin on the back. That's a very easy way to pick up a little piece of wood. It, I don't think it was an ant, Susan. I think it was a little worm that lives in the salt water and drills holes in old wood. Can we use those leaves? Sure. Now, they won't last forever, but they're pretty tough, leathery privet leaves. And if you're just making, you want a special necklace for a special occasion, then you can put in something that isn't going to last very long. What do they make necklaces out of in Hawaii? 
You ever seen pictures of people that come back from Hawaii and uh, they have flowers? Flowers, right, and they don't last very long. And there's a special name for them, lays. People come back from Hawaii all loaded down with lays. Well, let's take a look at you. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> I'm going to keep going and try to make mine all feathers. If Aurora keeps shedding feathers. Please, I. Mm hmm. Anything. Oh, you. Here, Aurora, you want some privet berries to chew on? All right, let's take a look at yours now, Jennifer. It must be. Ah, Jennifer. You have a friend named Jennifer, don't you? <laughs> Susan. Let's look at Susan's necklace. And what do you think your friends would say if you wore that to school tomorrow? <laughs> it's a nature necklace, and you were right. Miss Jean. <laughs> you went to see Miss Jean, and you learned how to make a nature necklace. And where else would you find all kinds of odds and ends like that? Well, you could find outside. Yes, you could find everything outside except Aurora's feathers. But I think that's that's. Uh, you could find bird feathers outside. Right, let me tie it and see if. See if we can put it over your head. See if we have enough room to put it over I'm your head. I'm going to put a few more beads on. You're going to put a few more. OK, you don't want to stop. Good girl. <laughs> Let's take a look at yours, Chris. Christopher. Uh, Christopher is a, is a very slow and careful worker. And Jennifer is a faster worker. And she doesn't. Jennifer. This <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> Susan is a faster worker. <laughs> Well, that's very pretty. I hope you'll finish that, Christopher, and give it to your mother. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about some nature jewelry today at HodgePodge Lodge. And you'll look around and see if you have some feathers or some berries, some fungi, some seeds, uh, some bones, anything that comes from nature that would make something pretty to wear. Come back soon again. This program was made possible through funds contributed by members of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Pre-recorded in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting.